you are asked to observe your respiration, you observe hardly two respiration and gone, this mind is gone somewhere. And after a long time you realize, oh, where it is gone, I was here to observe my breath, and again you bring it. Again after one or two breaths, gone somewhere. And again you realize you bring it back. And not only that, when you find this mind wandering again and again, a flickering mind, you feel so agitated. What kind of mind I am carrying? It cannot work this ordinary work just to observe. It has nothing to do. Respiration is there. It's not a breathing exercise that you get fatigued because of that. It is there. And your job is just to observe. It's just happening. You are sitting on the bank of the river. The, bank, the river is flowing. What do you have to do? And still, it cannot do even this easy job. You feel very frustrated. You generate agitation, irritation. Oh, no, no. Then you are going against the technique. This is the, your own habit pattern of the mind that when something unwanted happens, you react. You react with irritation, with agitation, with negativity. And this is what you started doing. Now you want the mind to get concentrated and look, it is not concentrated. So you start reacting. Oh, no, no, no. The technique wants you just accept the fact. Mind has wandered away. At this moment, the mind has wandered away. Smilingly accept it, wandered away. So what? The breath is still there. I come back to breath. Come back to breath. Again it wanders away. Again come back to breath. Very soon you will realize that as soon as you accept the fact the mind has wandered away, you won't have to pull it back to the breath. It just comes. It will come automatically. You just accept the fact mind has wandered away. Enough. It will come back to the breath. So you started observing your mind, the nature of your mind. It keeps on wandering. What a fleeting mind, a flickering mind, a wandering mind. Another reality, where does it wander? Oh, so many objects. You can't keep a diary. You're not allowed to keep a diary here, but even if you were allowed, no, not possible for anyone to keep a diary where it wanted. Every moment it is some, somewhere on the sky or somewhere in another world altogether. You can't keep a diary, but still, Carefully, if you notice, you will find there are only two fields, only two fields for this mind to wander. The field of the past memories, the field of the future. A memory will arise in your mind, this memory or that memory. At this moment, this memory, later on maybe some other memory. But some memory, it so happened, it so happened. Oh, so and so insulted me in the past. So and so abused me. At that time, I didn't know what to do. Now this fellow insults me. I will retort like this. I will reply like this. I will do like this and start rolling in future. And you keep on rolling in future, rolling in future. Again, suddenly a thought of the past comes. And you start rolling in the past. Again, you jump to the future. And you keep on rolling in the future. Ah, this is the habit pattern of my mind. It keeps on rolling in the past or rolling in the future. It does not want to live in the present. It does not want to live in the present. And one has to live in the present. How can you live in the past? The past is gone forever. You cannot buy back the moment that has gone away. You cannot buy back it and relive giving all the dollars of the world. Impossible. It's gone forever. And future is future. Unless it becomes present, you can't live. You have to live in the present. And look what sort of mind, which does not want to live in present. Oh, that is the reason why it remains so agitated. It does not know the art of living. And the whole technique teaches you the art of living, how to live in the present moment. Even a few moments you get, when you are with the respiration, this is the moment, the reality of this moment, the breath coming in, the breath going out, and all other moments, when you were rolling in the past or in the future, was the result of the habit pattern of the mind. Another reality will become clearer and clearer. Well, it wanders in the past, it wanders in the future. What kind of thoughts? Again, two kinds of thoughts, two patterns. Pleasant, unpleasant. When it rolls in the past memories, the memory may be pleasant memory or unpleasant memory. When it rolls in future, the thought of the future may be pleasant or unpleasant. So either it is pleasant 
or it is unpleasant, then you will notice that a, when it is when it has started rolling in something pleasant of the past or of the future, then a part of the mind has started reacting. Ah, I like it. Ah, wonderful. <laughs> this should happen again and again. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. This liking, liking, it turns into craving, craving, and it turns into clinging, clinging, and you don't know how you have lost the balance of your mind. You have become unbalanced, you become miserable, because you started craving, you started clinging. Similarly, when the mind starts rolling in a thought unpleasant of past or future, you will notice a part of the mind will start reacting, I don't like it, I don't like it. And this don't like it, don't like it, very soon turns into aversion, hatred. And again you notice you have lost the balance of your mind, you have become very agitated. Ah, this is the present behavior pattern of my mind. It keeps on reacting with craving, clinging, aversion, hatred, which in the language of the days of Buddha was raga, craving means kraga, and dvesha, aversion. So all the time craving, aversion, craving, aversion, therefore all the time agitated. Why this craving? Why this aversion? Because one does not know what is happening deep inside. A surface level of the mind remains busy with the outside objects and one does not know the depth of the mind where craving arises, where aversion arises, where agitation arises, where misery arises. This is what is called ignorance. Moha and also moha, ignorance. The mind is so ignorant. At times you will notice how ignorant the mind is. A thought arises in the mind, past or future, doesn't matter, pleasant or unpleasant, doesn't matter. A thought has arisen in the mind. And before even one sentence is over, some other thought has started. And before one sentence is over, some other thought has started. Irrelevant thoughts. There is no sequence of thoughts. And this is madness. What else madness can be? When you say somebody, an insane person, a mad person, this person is mad, this person is insane because this person has no sequence of thoughts. An example. An insane person, hungry from last four days, you feel compassionate, you offer him a plate full of food. Very happy, he sits down. Because he's hungry. He takes just one morsel of the food, and before this morsel reaches the mouth, his thought pattern has changed. Now he starts thinking, I'm in a bathroom, I'm taking bath, and this is a soap cake. Starts rubbing it on his body. <laughs> and before that is over, another thought starts coming. This person who has come is my enemy, and he has come to kill me. And before he kills me, I should kill him. And how to kill him? Oh, these are the hand grenades. I throw and he will be dead. Throws away whole food. This is a mad person, insane person. He has got no sequence of thought. Everyone will realize how insane one is. <laughs> you got no sequence of thoughts. One thing starts and then suddenly something else will start and then suddenly something else will start. Madness. And this is called moha, ignorance. One ignorance said that you don't know what is happening. One ignorance that there is no sequence of your thought. Well, even if there is a sequence of thought, you don't know how you are generating negativity in your mind and how you are generating misery. This will become clearer and clearer at the experiential level as you go deeper, as you go deeper. 